This is question number seven. We're told points A, 2 comma 2 comma 5, B, 1 comma minus 1 comma minus 4, C, 3 comma 3 comma 10, and D, 8 comma 6 comma 3 are the vertices of a pyramid with a triangular base. In the first part for four marks, we're asked to calculate the lengths of AB and AC and the angle BAC. Okay, so let's just write these in column form. We certainly don't need to. I prefer to see everything in column form as I think it's easier to work with. So A, B, C and D. So we've got 2, 2 and 5. We've got 1, we've got minus 1 and we've got minus 4. We've got 3, 3, 10 and we've got 8, 6, 3. So let's first look now for A, B. A, B, if we want the direction A, B, this is going to be B minus A and that is going to be equal to 1 minus 2, which is going to be minus 1, minus 1 minus 2, which is going to be minus 3, minus 4 minus 5, that is going to be minus 9. So we can say now that the length, which is the modulus, or the absolute value using Pythagoras, is going to be equal to the square root of minus 1 squared. We're going to have minus 3 squared, and we're going to have minus 9 squared. So that's going to give me now the square root of 1 plus 9 plus 81, which gives me now root 91. And I'm going to leave it in exact form. We're not asked to give this to three decimal, three significant figures, two decimal places. I'm just going to leave it as it is. OK, let's now look at the next one, and that is going to be AC. The vector AC is going to be equal to C minus A. So that's going to be equal to C minus A, 1, 1, 5. So let's do that, 1, 1, 5. So now I want the absolute value or the distance. And I can write now the modulus of AC. Again, using Pythagoras is going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 5 squared. So this is going to be now 1 plus 1 plus the 25. So what's that give me? Root 27, or if we like, we could say 3 root 3. Entirely up to us if we want to break that down. OK, we now need to find the angle BAC. So let's have a look at this then. BAC, I'm just going to draw a quick sketch and I'm just going to draw it like so. Now this doesn't have to be massively immaculate. We'll just get some idea of what's going on. So what we've got B and then we'll have A like so. So let's do that. Um, and we're going to have A just here. So let's look at that. We've got A here. We've got, now let's put uh, B here, and we've got C just here. So what we want then is the angle between these two vectors, which is going to be just there. We can use A dot B over mod A mod B is equal to cos theta. And that will give us the angle between the two vectors. So we'll just put theta just here. So if we look at A, let's just say now that this is going to give us then A, B, we're going to dot AB with AC. We're going to now put this over the modulus of AB, multiplied now by the modulus of AC, and we're going to go ahead and let that be equal to cos theta. So what we're going to have, well, we've just found AB. That's going to be minus 1, minus 3. We've got minus 9. I'm going to dot that with AC, 1, 1, 5. If we now divide that by the modulus of AB, the modulus of AB is root 91, and the modulus of AC is root 27, that will be equal to cos theta. So what we're going to have in the numerator here, we're going to have minus 1, minus 3, so let's do that, minus 1, minus 3, minus 45. Uh, we'll take the inverse cosine, so we'll have now cos to the minus 1 of this value, will be equal to theta, let's put the 91, and the root 27 in. So let's go ahead and work out that angle. Uh, that's going to be an obtuse angle. Check your in degrees mode, shift mode three if you're unsure. Uh, that'll put us in degrees, and then we'll take now the inverse cosine, and that's going to be minus, what are we gonna have? Minus 49. So minus 49 over now the root of 91, times by 27. So I can put it all under one root, that's perfectly fine. And that is going to give me 
So we can save at that angle, okay? So theta, the angle, is going to be 171.3 degrees, and that's to 1 dp. So that's done. That's that part done. That's four marks. So this is not the, the most accurate of sketches if I really wanted to make this look more realistic. Let's, uh, let's take that out looking somewhere like that and put that just there. So we got something like so. Okay, so let's just go ahead and extend this. Right, so that's what we've got. So it's going to look something like that. Okay, in the second part for three marks, we need to show that AD, so the vector AD, is perpendicular to both AB and AC. So what we can say then is if perpendicular, we can say that AD dotted now with AB will be equal to zero. And we can say from here that AD dotted with AC will also be equal to zero. So if we look now AD, let's now get an expression for AD. AD is going to be D minus A, so that's going to be 6, 4, minus 2. So AD, so AD, the vector AD is going to be equal to D minus A, which is going to give us now 6, 4, and minus 2. So let's just check I've got that right, 6, 4, and minus 2. Uh, so AD is D minus A, so 6... 4 minus 2. So that works. So let's now look at AD dot BC. So what we're going to have is 6, 4, minus 2 dotted with AB. Now we found AB. Let's have a look at AB. AB is just here. Uh, minus 1, minus 3, minus 9. So minus 1, minus 3, minus 9. So that's going to give us minus 6, minus 12, plus 18, which quite clearly is naught, therefore perpendicular. Let's now go for 6, 4, and then we've got our minus 2. Let's just make that slightly more clearer. Dotted now with AC. So if we dot this with AC, 1, 1, 5. That's going to give me 6 plus 4 minus 10, which is equal to 0, therefore perpendicular. So all we've done is shown that the dot product is going to be 0 if we dot those vectors with one another. Okay, so what does that tell me? That tells me that this is AD is mutually perpendicular. Um, okay, so we've shown that. Uh, now we need to calculate the volume of the pyramid A, B, C, D, and this is worth three marks. So what I'm going to do, I'll just extend this up here. What I'm going to create now is this scenario. So I'm going to put up here, and hopefully this will hopefully this will look pretty normal. What we've got then is this point now, uh, and we've got D just here. So let's go ahead and put D just here. And I'm now going to draw a quick, um, yeah, I'm going to draw a quick sketch of this pyramid. So what I'm going to do is just create now the pyramid. I'm going to have a base, and that's going to be the triangle now, um, A, C, or A, C, B, A, B, C. And then what I'm going to do is drop this down like so. So what we're doing is essentially creating this pyramid that looks something like in fact, let's just swing that round there. Let's make it look a bit more uh, realistic. Let's do that. That's what we need. So that's a better That's a better thing. Now, I know, I'm told here, the volume of the pyramid is one for base area times by perpendicular height. So what I'm going to do is get now the perpendicular height. The perpendicular height is going to be the modulus of AD. So if we look at AD, this height right here is going to be equal to the square root of 6 squared. So 6 squared plus 4 squared, plus minus 2 squared. So what's that going to give us? That's going to be equal to, and I'm just a bit messy here, 36 plus 16 plus 4, which is going to give us root 56. So let's put that in, root 56. So that's AD, okay, that's that height there. Now we know that these are mutually perpendicular, so we've already done that. So let's just put these on so it looks something like that. So all I need is the, the area right here. Now I know that theta is my one seven what on one seven one point three, which is still in the calculator. The area of a, a scaling triangle is one half A B sine C. Now I've got the modulus of A C. The modulus of A C is going to be now uh, for root 27, or 3 root 3, and then this one, AB, is going to be root 91. So what I'm going to do is just write now that the volume is going to be one third, then we're going to multiply this by 
The height of this, um, I'll do it either way around. I'm going to do it by the height, which is root 56. Then we're going to multiply this by, and the area of the triangle is one half AB sine C in general. So I'm going to multiply this by one half. We've got now the root of 27 times by the root of 91 times by the sine of the angle which is stored in the calculator. Uh, 171.3 dot 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 and so on and so forth. So this should do it. So this now is the area of the triangle. This is a perpendicular height and this right here is what uh, essentially I'm multiplying the third by. Now brackets not required here so let's just get rid of those. Hopefully that shows you what I'm doing on this. So um, dot 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 and that's stored in the calculator. So let's get the calculator out. So if I just store this in case I make a mistake, shift store A. So I'm going to have now uh, one third, in fact I'll just make this one six, one third times a half, one six, uh, multiplied by the root of 56, times by 27, I can, uh, I need 56, 56, times by 27, times by 91, times by now the sine, and we're still in degrees mode, of A, which is stored in the calculator. Um, that's going to give me 9.3 recurring. So let's put this. We can say now that V, the volume, is going to be 9.3 recurring, and that's going to be units cubed. So all I've done is simply looked at this. Um, I think that's a fair sketch of what we've got going on. Uh, the initial sketch B was up here rather than just here. But this just gives us some idea of what's going on. We give them the formula here, and we simply plug it in. So that's one way that you could do the question. There are alternatives, but in total 10 marks for question 7.